Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm Akanksha Mishra and you're watching Scientifics, where I'll be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. First up, we have a new discovery by European scientists that confirms 70% of all meteorites that fall on Earth originate from just three asteroid families from the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. An asteroid family is, as the name suggests, a group of asteroids that have similar characteristics and originate from the same parent. So, in the case of collision-related asteroids, these are basically asteroids that are fragments of the same parent asteroid. The study shows that three young asteroid families between the ages of 5 to 40 million years old are responsible for 70% of all the meteorites that have struck Earth. The new research is by France-based CNRS, European Southern Observatory and Charles University. It was published in two different research papers in Nature Journal on 16th October. Their research is based on comparing the composition of asteroids in the asteroid belt with the meteorite remains on Earth. Due to the telescopic technology that allowed this research to take place, scientists can now also trace the origins of kilometer-sized asteroids that are more of a threat to the Earth. Now, for the next story, we have an interesting one. It's a study that possibly answers the question of why we crave carbohydrate-rich foods like breads and pastas. Scientists at the University of Buffalo have found that the gene that digests and tastes starch, called the salivary amylase gene, is more than 800,000 years old, even older than Homo sapiens. So in a paper published in the Science Journal on 17th October, researchers have shown how the first amylase gene, AMY1, might have developed in Neanderthals before Homo sapiens evolutionary divulged from them. This is especially noteworthy since this means that the gene to digest starch was present and multiplying in human beings before the beginning of domesticated agriculture, which is when humans actually started eating a lot of starch. To conduct this research, scientists looked at genomes from humans as far back as 40,000 years ago and they found that the amylase gene was present in these samples. More amylase genes means that you can digest starchy food more effectively. And the advent of agriculture and the presence of wheat in human diet led to more amylase gene duplication in the body. The third study addresses how women and men process pain differently and its different consequences. It is from the PNAS Nexus Journal, which identified that different pain mechanisms could be the reason why regular opioids aren't as effective for women. The study, which was conducted by University of California scholars, assessed clinical trials of 98 participants for lower back pain and found that regular opioids like morphine and fentanyl worked more effectively on male participants rather than on females. This is because, according to the study, men rely on endogenous opioids, as in painkillers that are produced by the body itself to relieve their pain. So, external opioids work on them. But for women, the pain relief does not work through natural painkiller or opioid methods. This indicates a huge gap in opioid research and potentially harmful effects for women who have to end up taking higher doses of painkillers to get more pain relief. Therefore, they are also more prone to addiction to painkillers. The study suggests tailor-made solutions for women that look at neural pathways or other chemicals to address pain relief. And our last story is about new research that could potentially reduce plastic usage, the discovery of the fastest degrading bioplastic material by scientists at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. This material, a type of cellulose diacetate, CDA, degrades in seawater even faster than paper and potentially is a sustainable alternative to styrofoam. The study, published in ACS Sustainable Chemistry and Engineering Journal on 17th October, monitored different forms of bioplastics to see which one degrades faster in seawater under the right temperatures, the right light and other factors. The goal was to create a sustainable and consumer friendly alternative to plastic according to the press release by the institution that is based in the US. Since CDA is also a type of foam, in its texture, it can be useful for packaging and other requirements for which currently the non-biodegradable plastic is used. That's all we have for today. This is Akanksha Mishra. Follow the print for more such news and updates.